is there a model of the stages that you guys have been talking about and the milestones that you've been talking about? Is there a model that you see as fairly universal, or is that kind of determined by the nature of your startup? And if so, how do you sort that out? There is no specific universal rule, but uh, and there are specific uh, measures that differ from Europe standards, from the U.S. standards, if if, if you want to see it this way. Um, like um, the budget that an angel investor would have in the U.S. Uh, is is a bit different from what he would have in the in the uh, Europe in in Europe basically, and uh, it's it it differs as well from industry to industry. So a social entrepreneur would be a bit different from a technology entrepreneur, uh, from different uh, industries entrepreneurs as well. Uh, since we're focusing on technology here, and and it's it's ITU definitely, so it's about technology. Uh, it it would be uh, I would say that uh, the stages are 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 almost similar for any uh, entrepreneur, but the uh, how much uh, does it differ between a VC or an angel investor or maybe even not going to towards investors but using crowdfunding. Crowdfunding has become very popular and people are willing to actually pay a lot. If they love the idea and want to support it and want it, want it to become live, and and uh, I've seen several examples of of uh, ideas that have generated uh, one thousand percent out of crowdfunding. They wanted a specific amount, then they got ten times that amount because people believed in the idea that they're doing, and and it really works for social uh, entrepreneurs specifically, and for technology as well. So I think this is also. Uh, a good uh, source of getting money, but as as uh, Varun said, uh, as an entrepreneur, you need to think about why do I need the money, and do I really need that money, and and what what stage am I in 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 uh, in, in basically my startup uh, to decide on that. I think it's uh, at an early stage. I think um, it's really important that there there are a few milestones. These are core and essential to any kind of business. They come at different points uh, of the cycle of the organization um, because of the the way these ideas started or how the team got together. But I think it's fundamental to remember that they're always uh, early stage ideas until they have been validated. I think so. You have an idea, you have a theory for a change in the world, and I think the next most logical step is validating it. And validating it doesn't necessarily mean building a product out of it or going in the market uh, or releasing something. Validating the need is making sure that this gut, this theory, this hypothesis that you have is actually a real problem in the world and other people face it and they're willing to maybe pay for a product that you're going to serve or they, they actually feel the need as much. And once you've validated, I, I talked about this loop of building and measuring and learning, if you want to go from this validated idea, I, I, I think that the problem is X. And I've actually tested in the market by going to a lot of people, by talking to customers, by spending a lot of time with them, by shadowing them that this is a real problem. And they claim it's a real problem. And they will give me $5 or 5 reals for it. And, uh, and then going through the process of actually building something, measuring it. So taking it out, establishing really, really concrete metrics about what you think is success for you. And then learning about what worked and what didn't. And once you do this once, you realize it's a beautiful path to help you discover things that you can feed back into your product, into your service. Feeding it back into your service and then going through this loop several times until you think you've nailed it. Or you've gone long enough until you feel like your, your customer is happy and they're willing to pay for it or they really want to use it. I think once you've used it, then things become a little more clear. That then you know that the problem is growing. Then you know that the problem is going from 10 happy customers to 100 happy customers. And you do the next okay. logical thing. And I think a lot of people get caught up in hiring. I know I did a long time ago, and I think you should put off hiring until it's actually the biggest problem. Um, growth is the lifeblood of all startups, as our investors say. And you, you've got to hiring comes or a lack of human capital comes in the way of growth, then you've got to hire. And these are kind of the the rough um, kind of stages that you want to grow into. 